When Charles Darwin published his book proposing the theory of evolution in 1859, it created a controversy that continues to this day. There are two key notions in Darwin's theory. The first is that all species evolved from earlier forms of life. Secondly, he believed that species changed and adapted to their environment as a result of what he called natural selection. Those organisms that developed features that helped them to adapt to their environment would survive and pass on these traits to their offspring. Others would die out. We are going to look at some of these ideas and explore how the theory provides a framework that the biological sciences and other related sciences use to understand life. Darwin's theory did not emerge in an intellectual vacuum. By the middle of the 19th century, the idea that the world was about 6,000 years old was being challenged on many fronts. Geologists studying the surface of the Earth came to understand that some parts of the Earth's crust had been laid down millions and perhaps billions of years before. The Colorado River cut through these sedimentary rocks, creating the Grand Canyon. The different strata of sandstone that can be clearly seen were laid down millions of years ago. Fossilized bones of extinct species have been found by people around the world for hundreds or even thousands of years, but no one had the means of measuring how old the bones were. The discovery of a nearly complete dinosaur skeleton in 1858 in the United States began a fascination with these gigantic creatures which continues to this day. Different types of fossils were collected and studied, and many looked nothing like the animals or plants that we see today. Their study led to the conclusion that species of animals and plants that are now extinct once lived on our planet in climates and environments very different to those that exist in the same places today. This fragmentary evidence seemed contradictory and confusing. It was Darwin's theory of evolution that provided a framework that helped scientists make sense of it all. Since that time, it has taken the work of literally thousands of researchers in the scientific community to gradually develop a picture of the history of life on our planet. Approximately 15 billion years ago, all material of the universe was condensed into a small place. It then exploded in an event called the Big Bang. Gases swirled about and slowly, over billions of years, stars were formed. Our own solar system was formed 4.6 billion years ago. The Earth was first a molten ball, but gradually it began to cool. It would take almost a billion years before conditions were conducive to the emergence of complex molecules such as amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins and the glucose, ribose, and deoxyribose molecules, which are essential to life. Over millions of years, random combining of these complex molecules took place. Some believe that life first developed in the shallow waters of a primordial sea. Others think it was in a hydrothermal vent deep beneath the surface. We will probably never know but it is generally agreed that life first began as a tiny prokaryotic cell 3.8 billion years ago, and this cell is the ancestor of all life on the planet. When the first cells emerged, they simply absorbed their chemical nutrients from their environment. It took another billion years before cyanobacteria evolved the ability to photosynthesize energy by combining water, carbon dioxide, and sunlight. Cells now had the means of producing their own food, and they became very abundant. One of the byproducts of photosynthesis is the release of free oxygen, and as oxygen accumulated, the atmosphere gradually began to change. 
Hundreds of millions more years passed before the oxygen levels were high enough for larger cells to develop. It is possible, but not certain, that some prokaryotes engulfed others inside their membrane. Gradually, they became part of the cell, taking on the specialized functions of organelles, such as a nucleus, mitochondria, and chloroplasts. Sometime around 1.8 billion years ago, these eukaryotic cells, which are about 10 times larger than prokaryotic cells, first begin to appear in the fossil record. About one billion years after their first arrival, some eukaryotic cells grouped together and became simple multicellular organisms. In time, they evolved so they could reproduce sexually through meiosis. Once the hereditary information of the organism was determined by both the male and the female, the possibility of genetic variation became much greater, and around 600 million years ago, the number and variety of species exploded. The world is 4.6 billion years old, but the great proliferation of species of plants and animals has been concentrated in the last 550 million years. Scientists divide this enormous stretch of time into a number of different eras, and then further subdivide them into shorter spans called periods. These eras and periods coincide with the major differences in the fossils found in the successive layers of rocks all around the world. Repeatedly over this great stretch of time, the continents have changed position, colliding and separating. The seas have risen and fallen. The climate has warmed and cooled. Ice ages have come and gone. Many organisms couldn't survive when their environments changed and massive extinctions resulted, leaving only a few survivors who slowly rebounded. The fossils show that as the Earth passed from ancient periods of geological time towards the present, organisms increasingly resembled species alive today. All of the body forms we see now were present 550 million years ago, including many more which no longer exist. The extinction of species is part of the complicated evolutionary history of life, and it is estimated that 99.9% .9 of all species that have lived on the planet are now extinct. The dinosaurs are just one example. They were the largest and most dominant species on Earth for almost 180 million years. A recent theory suggests that about 65 million years ago, a large asteroid struck the surface of the Earth. This collision wiped out almost every living thing in North America. Such an enormous cloud of dust and debris was thrown up into the sky that the Earth was darkened for a long time, killing many, but not all, plants and animals. This event was catastrophic for the dinosaurs, but their elimination proved to be a great opportunity for mammals and eventually a new species, early humans. There are various types of evidence to support the belief that all living organisms descended from a common ancestor. The fossil record accumulated by geologists and paleontologists provides some of the strongest evidence. There are now accurate ways to determine the age of fossils. Using this fossil record, biologists have been able to show the evolutionary relationships of species. The study of comparative anatomy provides evidence that embryos of animals go through similar stages of development. Many organisms have groups of bones, nerves, muscles, and organs with the same anatomical plan, but with different functions. Modern biology has also shown that all life is the same basic biochemistry. Every living thing is made up of cells. DNA exists in every cell of every living organism, and all cells use similar biochemical reactions 
to process and metabolize food. But perhaps the strongest evidence for a common ancestor comes from the study of genetics. It confirms the relatedness of different species and helps scientists chart their evolutionary history. For example, the genetic codes of horses and fish are quite different because they separated sometime in the very remote past. But the DNA study of chimpanzees and humans show that there is only a 1.6% difference in the genetic makeup of the two species. The chimpanzee is our closest living relative. It is estimated that the two species separated as recently as five million years ago, only a moment in time in terms of evolutionary history. The study of genetics has made an even greater contribution to our understanding of evolution for it provides an explanation of how changes in species actually occur. Biological evolution is actually the change in the genetic composition of organisms over time. All living things hold their hereditary information in the genes contained in the DNA molecules in their cells. In multicellular organisms that use sexual reproduction, or meiosis, the genes are randomly reshuffled as the hereditary information is passed between the generations, and the offspring are never exact replicas of the parents. Sexual recombination of genes creates an enormous variety of combinations, greatly increasing the chances that some of the offspring will survive and reproduce within changing environments. Genetic mutations occur when the nucleic acids, which carry the hereditary information in the genes, are damaged, creating errors in the genetic code that can be repeated in succeeding generations. Sometimes the change of a single base in a gene can cause errors in function. At other times, entire sections of chromosomes may be deleted, causing genetic information to be lost or sections can be duplicated, resulting in new genes being introduced. Most mutations are harmful. Some have no effect on the offspring, but occasionally they can be an advantage. Mutations have created alternative forms of genes called alleles. It's the same gene, expressed differently. For example, brown or blue eyes or black or blonde hair color. These alternate genes lead to diversity within populations. All the genes within a population comprise its gene pool. Evolution would not be possible without mutations because they create and maintain the diversity of the gene pool on which natural selection and other agents act. Biologists believe that the main way that new species evolve is as the result of small, incremental genetic changes that occur over many generations. However, when the gene pool is small, genetic changes tend to be emphasized. The genetic changes to the gene pool of a population are also linked to adaptation, or to use Darwin's term, natural selection. For example, perhaps a genetic mutation occurs which gives a bird a stronger beak. This change allows it to gather more food than others in the species. Because it has thrived, the bird mates more frequently and passes on these genetic traits to its offspring, and they in turn thrive and have more offspring. Over many generations, the trait of a stronger beak becomes a characteristic of the species. In this way, the genetic changes help the species adapt to its environment. Changes to a population's gene pool are part of the explanation of how species evolve and adapt to the environment. But what are the circumstances in which that might arise? Physical isolation can play an important role. Mountain ranges and islands isolate some members of species. 
Since the early explosion of life 550 million years ago, the land masses have moved a great deal. 200 million years ago, all of the continents were formed together into one supercontinent called Pangaea. About 125 million years ago, the continents began to drift apart and eventually took up their present positions. These changes led to the isolation of different branches of species. Over many generations, isolated populations of a species develop different characteristics and in time, each group accumulates a different genetic makeup. When the genetic differences are so great that individuals can no longer interbreed, then they are categorized as a new species. The geological changes that caused the continents to move also brought about great changes in climate and led to the massive extinctions evident throughout evolutionary history. There is a belief that evolution is so slow that it can't be observed, but it is possible to see it when the organism produces offspring within a very short time frame. Bacteria can reproduce very quickly, some in only 20 minutes. When antibiotics were first introduced, they were very effective at killing bacteria, but after many generations, the antibiotics no longer worked as well. The bacteria had evolved a way to defend themselves against the antibiotic. The extinction of species is also a process inherent in evolution. Many biologists are concerned that we are in the midst of yet another mass extinction of species, but this one has a human agent. Humans have so altered the environment that the natural habitat has shrunk to the point where many plants and animals are unable to survive. And what about our own future? Will the species Homo sapiens evolve into new and different species? At the moment, that seems unlikely. The development of new species usually occurs when a population is small and the gene pool limited. The human race now consists of about six billion people and is growing rapidly. The likelihood of small groups remaining isolated for many generations seems remote. But the theory of evolution holds that change is inherent in life itself. It is estimated that most species continue for about one million years. Modern humans have only existed for 200,000 years. Who knows what may happen in the future? The biologist who is credited with proposing the theory of evolution was the Big Bang is believed to have occurred about 15 billion years ago. True or false? Our solar system was first formed billion years ago. The atmosphere was made up of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide when the Earth was first formed. True or false? Life first began as a tiny cell about 3.5 billion years ago. It is thought that eukaryotic cells first evolved when some prokaryotes engulfed others inside their membrane. True or false? Are the closest living relatives to humans? The record has helped biologists show the evolutionary relationships of species. Most biologists believe that the main way new species evolve is as a result of small incremental changes. True? Or false? Evolution is so slow it can never be observed. True or false? 